Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis. To my right is Kurt Dukoch, Raymond Fletcher, and William B.J. Beach Baker. Um, In the news, in the local news, we have... David and Goliath. M Life uh, is being sued by MGM Grand Resorts, and what's going on with that, Raymond? Wait, isn't M Life MGM Grand Resorts uh, player loyalty? Yeah, it is, and it, the people um, there there was pe- people that want to name their pot shop M Life, and MGM is saying, "Oh no." So what do they? What do we got to say on that one, Kurt? Let's, I was going to say, let's go to Kurt with that, and then I'll follow well, one after. Well, him. the MGM has filed a federal trademark lawsuit against M Life Incorporated, which is the company that's put in the uh, the medical marijuana dispensary application here in Las Vegas. Uh, M Life is the name of the casino company's customer re- rewards program, which is used at 15 of the company's properties, including strip properties Bellagio, Delano, Las Vegas, Excalibur, Luxor, Mandalay Bay, MGM Grand, Monte Carlo, New York, New York, and the City Center. That would be Delano. Yeah. Sorry, I'm an FDR Del- guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so obviously the uh, the gaming company is a little upset. They the lawyers uh, sent M Life Wellness partner Dan Lutz a cease and desist letter, according to the se- September 16th lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court in Las Vegas. the The pot company did not agree to comply. Well, they filed that uh, suit on the 17th uh, of this month, alleging trademark dilution and cyber squatting. Um, the MGM has spent millions of dollars since 2010 to promote this program. So it is interesting that four years later, somebody wants to go ahead and grasp on their name. Well, you know, the thing is, is that when you are, uh, when, when you're going to name something, generally you look it up. Generally, you do a little research when you're starting a company. So I don't know what this uh, potential owner was thinking, but... I wouldn't pay him for this ignorance. Well, he did. He did put a hyphen between the M and the life. <laughs> well, you know, I oh, think yeah. this is one fight uh, that David's not going to win. The MGM Grand, when they start going after people for stuff, they're they are really not going to back down. Uh, yeah, they they've did. used that on what sixteen properties is for the rewards program, like you said, and they don't want their brand diluted or or misrepresented for sure and we also have the thing that the fact that the nevada gaming uh committee came out and said that gaming cannot be associated with any of these medical marijuana dispensaries so you got to figure the people at mgm are thinking whoa wait a minute this is this is making it look like we're getting involved in this and we're not and 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 until till the gaming commission comes down and says it's okay, I, I don't see this ever, ever, ever happening. Well, my question would be, can they change their name on their application at the state or or the uh, or the city level? I not, mean, not at this juncture. You got to look when the applications were submitted, and we're we're on the eve of October. They're about to start announcing pretty soon within the next month or so. Well, what's ironic on this one is I think that they were one of the only ones that were approved for their zoning, their planning and zoning at the at the city council meeting this that past Tuesday actually. We left here and went well, right no, to that city that city planning and zoning meeting. There there were a lot of them, a lot of them uh that were were approved, but as it comes to the application, in your application, you had to have, you know, uh, elevations and drawings of your building and all the signage and all that is in there. And now to go back and have to change all of that, I don't think I don't think it's possible. Well, the, the marijuana dispensary owner, Daniel Lutz, says he doesn't want his business to be confused with a casino loyalty program. And he says that they can work out an agreement. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> and and it's M apostrophe life. Let's say the name stands for marijuana raised to the power of life. How about mm. raised to the power of dorkiness? <laughs> I'll say, you know, they're and more in the local news. Well, can I use my uh, my M Life Rewards cards at their dispensary? Ooh, there's the question. <laughs> there's the question. Um, so more for local news, you guys. If you're going to do something illegal, don't put it on YouTube. Please don't. Well, first, don't do something illegal. First off, second, <laughs> don't brag if you do. No, why? What's going on with that? Well. Uh, CNN picked up this story, and this house is right around the corner from my house. See who? CNN. Wow. Yeah, national so this, news. This got to national news, and it says Las Vegas bust pot grower who put his crop on YouTube. I'm actually friends with both of these people on Facebook. So, uh, and and I saw some of the vi uh, the not the videos, but some of the pictures, and I didn't really you know look at start counting plants, but apparently score does count plants yeah and this is something that we've been talking about for a while that as on the verge of these dispensaries starting to open which hopefully we might see some before the end of the year fingers crossed if not very early in january that they are going to come through and they are going to start they're going to start busting people because it's it's the end of the era for them and we're starting to see it there was another bust today in north las vegas so yep. all these people who think that they're going to be growing all of this all this cannabis and selling it to the dispensaries it, you got another thing <laughs> yeah it, it, i mean that's that's not the way this works i mean i mean there is the one time sale in there but it wasn't designed to have massive grow houses growing just to supply the dispensary right off the bat and i think you should have to prove that you're a medical marijuana patient in order to sell because it's not fair for those that are not legitimate patients to have the ability to you know since they've been doing this illegally that, but that's well, I was going to say, for those of you that don't know, SCORE is Southern Nevada Cannabis Operation and Regional Enforcement. So that's the that's the uh, Metro's version. The, the North Las Vegas version is Rodeo. Is Rodeo. And yeah. Rodeo just got to work out, what, today or to yesterday? It was today. today. 300 plants were found in a North Las Vegas home at the 5200 block of Cardinal Flower Court. What a name. Near the intersection of Pecos and Washburn. Wow, that you know where Washburn is? Washburn is right where the North Las Vegas um, um, police station is. Washburn, and I don't think it's near Pecos, though. I think it's on the other side of the freeway. But th this just kind of underscores what we've been talking about, that they're going to ramp up and start busting people. Um and start busting people and busting these grow houses now that they have a lot of federal money to do that. And also they're going to start busting people before the grow uh, or before the pot shops open. Um, it, and I thought this was going to be coming way, way back, you know, right when they said that they were going to allow dispensaries, I thought, okay, well now they're just going to start ramping up all these busts. Mm -hmm. It's actually a good thing they didn't because a lot of people were depending upon, um, uh, depending upon illegal sources to get their medication and so it would have left a lot of people with a way with no way to get their medication because they weren't growing um you know i myself grow you know kurt and i grow ours um so that we don't have to depend upon any anybody else and, and we don't have to break laws to to you know to get medicated but a lot of people don't have the ability to grow themselves or have some type of debilitating illness and they want to, you know, and want to get their medication easy anyway. Easy access is what you're trying to say. Safe access. Easy safe, access. And, safe and easy access. And you're right. You're talking about people um, that are going to end up getting busted. Two people were arrested down when they raided that house. <laughs> That's true. And and another thing is these, uh, most of these homes are are more than likely, I can't say for sure because I wasn't part of these organizations or anything, but they're more than likely supplying the del delivery services that are operating right now, which are operating illegally, basically, but being allowed to get to it and being allowed to do that. So this is the first step 
in coming after those businesses. Not trying to create fear and paranoia here, just stating the facts. When they want to shut down a business, the first thing they do is they go after the supply. So everybody out there who is operating one of these delivery services and doesn't have a business license and isn't paying taxes and all this stuff, watch out. It's time to get out of this business. It, the, 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 the scenery is changing here in Nevada. We're going to have legal dispensaries and all of these, these illegal delivery services are going to be shut down. You know, you, 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 they just might as well do it the legal way, you know, get legal, you know, and they can join WeCan702.org and have the resources, have the knowledge, and have everything that, that we and other advocates have been fighting over the years for, you know, but you're absolutely right, Kurt. Now it's the time that all these people that have been doing this illegally, you know, th they are going to get busted, and the closer and closer that we get to the date, and then once the state does approve their applicants and everything does get going, I would not be shocked in the lightest to see a blitz, to mm -hmm. see maybe, you know, like 20, 30. I don't know how many illegal grows are going out there, you know, but well, I wouldn't be the, surprised. With the number of delivery services that you can find on Weed Maps and that, I, there, there's got to be there's got to be hundreds of them out there. and. You know, as I say, once again, we're not trying to create fear and paranoia out here. We're just stating the facts. And you got to understand that once that these businesses get open and these people have spent upwards of a million dollars to get this business license, they're not going to want these illegal these illegal services operating next to them, taking away their clientele. So you know that they're going to pressure business licensing, Metro and, and everybody in the city, the county and the state to shut them down. So, I mean... Yeah. Well, well I was going to say, even do? if you do, even if these illegal businesses do stop now, I guarantee you the that somebody has probably already ha done at least a dozen, two dozen buys off of them. A mm -hmm. Undercover has, and so even if they stop now, they they'll probably come after them anyway. You're absolutely right. And you you were talking about the meeting at Las Vegas City Council after you left here last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of Las Vegans showed up to express concern about these medical marijuana facilities in their neighborhood. Well, the funny thing about that is oh, a lot right. of these people weren't even in those neighborhoods. There was the same group of, of people there that got up on every dispensary application and said, we don't want this in our neighborhood. And I'm like looking, how many neighborhoods do you live in? Because it was the same group of people over and over and over again stating, we don't want this in our neighborhood. What what was their reasoning? Did they have one? You know what the reasoning was? It was the it was the stupidest thing I've ever heard because it's going to bring crime into our neighborhood. Oh yeah, the the, the patients are going to hop over the fences and rob the houses in the neighborhoods behind them. Okay, you know what? Then these people don't want to CVS. They don't want a Walgreens. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, but these are the same people. But a bar and a nightclub would be fine. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> these are the same people that don't have a problem with the liquor stores and everything else. You know, you get more crime, more violence, more damage, more domestic incidences from alcohol than you have ever done in the history of anybody utilizing cannabis. But a, the Planning Commission, back to the story here, has recommended approval for all but two locations for dispensaries. And plenty of people, they're just not happy about it. No, I mean, when, when we were listening to the city council, it, it was, and it was the planning and zoning commission, and yet people were getting up and saying, oh, no, not in my neighborhood, and, and they were getting turned down for their business for zoning and planning. When asked what specifically didn't meet zoning or, or you know, building codes, there was no answer. And and they tried to they they knocked one person out because of a, an entrance into their building because it was vertically integrated, and Kirk got up there and said, "Wait a minute, the, the legislative intent says that you know they want these buildings vertically integrated," and they turned the uh, they turned um, them down anyway. I think it was. Um, who was, well, they, it was it was Medman. Well, they they had let they had let somebody through with a, almost an identical plan, two built you know, even on the same street on Highland, right down the road, and and then this one comes up, and this one has a clear separation. They just didn't see it see it because they had the wrong plans up there at first. And when they showed them the right plans and showed that there was a clear separation between the dispensary and the grow operation, they still declined declined one of those. They said you can't have both of them in the same building. 
But yet- and then two people later got up with a got up uh, with a cultivation and a dispensary and it had a back door it and had a an shared entrance common and area. A shared common area and they were going to approve those people, you know, and then and it was just like you there, know, there was an awful lot of personal bias and uh, a personal agendas going on at that meeting. It was very evident. Yeah. Just remember, city council elections are next year. So, well, these are planning. This is and the planning zoning. and zoning commission. Is who this was? It wasn't front of city council. It was the it was the planning and the zoning. Um, so, so okay. Well, medical marijuana vote on the table was at was at the meeting. Um, that we were just talking about, and a medical marijuana dispenser would be located on Charleston near Tonopah, just across the street from UMC. A lot of people... Old, that was the old Debella flower shop that they were talking about. Yeah, we, we talked about that a couple months ago, too. A lot of people are not happy about this, including some homeowners associations and for the nearby neighborhood. Oh, because it's Scotch 80s. Yeah, it's a Scotch 80s. And the funny thing is, Senator Tick Seeger, who lives in the Scotch 80s, and he got up there right at the beginning and said, this is exactly what we need. So, Well, they're concerned about having a marijuana dispensary so close to where children live. Again, these are the same folks that don't have a problem. Hey, son, go to the refrigerator, get me a beer. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't know what they think goes on at these dispensaries, but you have to be a card member to even go into them. They're completely secure. They add security to your to your to your residence because they have round the clock security there. They have they have guards. So when that's around you, people criminals don't come near that. They avoid that kind of situation. So I don't know what these people think, like the world's going to come to the end because a dispensary opens. And not to re- remind her. To remind everyone once again, these things have to look like a pharmacy. It's not going to have big pot leaves all over. Your kids aren't going to know what it is unless you tell them. You know, it's not going to have Henry Hemp hanging out front. It's not going to have uh, dancing weed nurses, cannabis no. nurses. It's not going to have the dancing jammy the joint. No. I mean, none of this stuff. Yeah, it's going to look like a pharmacy. So if you're if you're so afraid of your kids, you know, educating your kids and you don't want them to know anything and they ask what it is, tell them it's a pharmacy because that's exactly what it is. It's somewhere where people go to get their medicine. You, you know, one of the, <laughs> one of the people that got up, there were two physicians and their daughter. They were talking about how the how there had been uh, break ins of the houses, how um, people had stuff stolen. And then there was a um, there was like a you know like somebody busted in somebody's house and and was stealing money from them and this lady convinced him not to hurt her and then she was saying and my daughter walks right by that property and da 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 i'm like your daughter walks and walks yeah, that by property, this property which is right now a homeless it, hotel which is a homeless hotel <laughs> and what you're telling people is that you're concerned about all of this crime but you'll let your daughter walk on that street and you're absolutely uh, right about education, Kurt, because when, when I'm in the store and people see me as a disabled individual, people are like, oh, don't look at him. Don't talk to him. You know, educate your child. Yes, this is a man in a wheelchair. Yes, this is medication. Yes, this is pharmacy. But we are too afraid or too ignorant to educate what we don't understand. That's true. And um, when we come back from a break, we have more um, local news and we have the last chance to win HempFest tickets. HempFest tickets. That's right. Locally owned and operated TSI, Total Safety Incorporated, has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? 
The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Las Vegas Hidden is here, October 4th, with live performances from Burn. Yeah, welcome to the Wax Room. Baby Bash. Cypress Hills Send Off. Dub C. Marlon Asher. New Kingston. And a surprise performance from the LBC. Fifty bands, DJs, speakers, and comics. All at the Las Vegas Hemp Fest, October 4th. Get your tickets now at all diversity tattoo and smoke shop locations and at LasVegasHempFest.com. That's LasVegasHempFest.com. Brought to you by Dr. Reef. Welcome back, everybody. And you know what that noise means? That means that we have our 420 moment. Our weekend celebrity 420 moment on a read today is Drew Carey. Um, Drew Carey describes himself as a libertarian, and when asked what a libertarian is, he said that he's a conservative that still smokes pot. <laughs> he is also expressed in his, his political philosophy in the following terms. I believe the answers to all the problems we face as a society won't come from Washington. It will come, for, um, come from us. So the way we decide to live our lives and our decisions about what we buy or don't buy are much more important than who we vote for. Well, you know, as his successor in uh, The Price is Right, Bob Barker used to pitch spay and neutering your animals, which is near and dear to my heart as a veterinary nurse. But Drew Carey is talking about um, uh, medical marijuana, and he has a foundation that has to do with medical marijuana. And what's that foundation, Kurt? It's his foundation is... His foundation is, let me see. Reason TV. Reason TV? Reason. Yes, Reason TV. So on his Reason TV, basically, it talks about how the uh, government needs to reclassify uh, marijuana and that people sh that need it should be able to get it. So on Drew Carey's, his new Reason TV video examines medical marijuana and the war on drugs. And so that is our 420 moment. A big smokes up to Drew Carey. Woohoo. Woo -hoo. And uh, speaking of HempFest tickets, we're going to go away and give away a pair of HempFest tickets now to caller number five at 702-731-1230. Um, also, on that commercial, you can also get your HempFest tickets at the Dr. Reefer offices now. He's offering them $5 off this week. So if you don't win the pair... Go over to Dr. Reefer and get yours over there. You save yourself five dollars. Or you get a call at eight six six eight two zero five five two eight. All right. So this is the last chance to win. You're going to um, Hempfest is going to be on Saturday, October fourth. It starts mm -hmm. at at eleven a.m. in the morning. Ten a.m. Ten a.m. A. to midnight. Ten a.m. to midnight. Um, mm -hmm. Plenty of All stuff day. to do and and plenty of. Uh, Plenty of speakers and bands and everything to listen to. And I'll be speaking right before Lady Rako goes on, who's one of our local favorites here and has played at many of our events. She'll also be performing there at Hempfest. So, and I'll be speaking a little bit before her. Rots. Okay. Now, next up is lots of regional news. Um, well, California and Arizona, California and Arizona okay. want to legalize marijuana. 
they want to legalize it similarly to alcohol. And in 2016, Arizona is following paperwork with uh, state elected officials granting them permission to raise money to campaign for the Citizens Initiative, according to the ArizonaCentral.com. Uh, the Marijuana Policy Project of Arizona Initiative will be fashioned after the voter-approved tax-regulated recreational marijuana program in Colorado. Not to be left behind, California is also uh, putting forth an initiative. Yes, on Wednesday in Los Angeles, the nation's largest uh, marijuana advocacy group, the Marijuana Policy Project, filed paperwork with the state of California to put a legalization initiative on the 2016 ballot following a similar move in Arizona this week. So um, experts say this strategy is focused is a focused effort to take advantage of higher vote out, voter turnout in presidential elections, in particular younger voters who tend to support marijuana legalization efforts. So, so they're, they're tying this together so to get more people out to vote. And uh, if you guys remember, when was the last day to register to vote? October 4th? I believe that's what it was. Yes, third day before the election. Yeah, yep. October 4th. October 4th. So you need to register to vote, please. All right. Um, tomorrow night, if anybody's interested, there is a comedy show at the Hustler Club. Medicinal Ooh. Michael is going to be uh, is going to be headlining in that performance, and you'll be able to see Medicinal Michael on stage also um, at Hempfest. At Hempfest, so Larry Flint's Hustler Club is hosting hardcore humor Wednesday night, and this Wednesday the show starts at 10 p.m. and it's free entrance. So this Wednesday, Medicinal Michael is going to be on um, Dube Domain, Angelina Spicer, uh, Tommy Lucerno, and Jeff Grant. Hey, Jen. Yes. We have it a winner. looks like we have a winner, Scott. We have a winner, Scott. Hi. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations so on winning the tickets. Thank you very much. So we'll get your info. I, I wanted to go really bad, but wasn't able to. So this is going to make it happen. Right on, right on. So we'll get your information um, off off the air and uh, send them to you. Or do we have time to send them to? Yeah, them? we have. Uh, if you're local, we can we can mail those out tonight, and they should be there tomorrow or the next day for you. So super. All right. All uh, right. Uh, how did you how did you hear Scott? about us, Scott? Um, actually, I went to the end of the year potluck this this last weekend and kind of hitting the ground running want to be part of weekend for sure right on all right well we're glad to have you a part of our organization and uh keep on listening for more great giveaways and congratulations again yeah we we just had our uh last uh potluck of the season which was really really awesome and if you have not had an opportunity to go to the social functions that, that's a really good opportunity to network with other patients. And we have our per patients first meeting first Friday coming up. First Friday, so, first Friday. I mean, we're, we're always out in the community. So make sure that you get involved and, you know, you'll you'll be able to uh, take part in all these fun events that we have. This first Friday, um, the day before Hemp Fest, we're going to be out at our booth. As always, it's between the Artisan and the Artifice. Um so it so if you uh, want to come out and see us in person, shake our hands, uh, get some information on how to get your medical marijuana card, come on out and see us this Friday. Otherwise, we'll see you at Hemp Fest on Saturday. That's right. Okay, Colorado High Court hears a medical marijuana case. Although marijuana may be legal in Colorado, you still may be fired for using it. Now, this is a follow-up on a story we did a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Or be, this, this guy is from Dish TV? No, this is a different one. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, this is um, Brandon Coates. He's a quadriplegic medical marijuana patient who was fired by the Dish Network after failing a drug test more than four years ago. And he still says he can't find steady work because employees are wary of his off-duty smoking. In a case being closely watched around the country, Colorado Supreme Court on today will hear arguments in Coates' case, which could have big implications for marijuana smokers in the first state to legalize recreational sales of the drug. 
The case highlights the clash between state laws that are increasingly accepting of medical marijuana use and employers' drug-free policies that won't tolerate it. Well, you know, Coates, who's been living off disability benefits, was gainfully employed before this uh, at Dish Network. He needs the marijuana to live his life, he's saying, um, and it shouldn't disable him to, to work and have gainful employment. But now he's actually living off of disability because he can't find a job. Well, he, he's 35. He was paralyzed in a car crash as a teenager, and he's been a medical marijuana patient since 2009 when, after a doctor's urging, he discovered that marijuana helped calm violent muscle spasms that were making it difficult to work. And he worked three years as a telephone operator. So it's not... Oh, how's that going to hurt anybody? Exact same thing with me that happened. He might I would laugh at somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. You know, yeah. But but uh, Coates is making his argument under a state law intended to protect cigarette smokers from being fired for legal behavior off the clock. That'll be a very interesting argument. And I wish the man all the luck in the world with his case. For sure. I mean, this man is talking on the phone to people. It's not like he's driving a vehicle. It's not like he's endangering, you know, endangering people by his smoking. All he's doing is talking on the phone. And it's not like he's sitting at work, you know, smoking a bong. Hey, bro. <laughs> you want that dishware? <laughs> He might get more sales that way. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But it, it's a shame in these United States of America, we can take all these opiates and drink and everything else, but we can't take cannabis as medication. <laughs> That's so, crazy. Yeah, um, I got some news out of Alaska, our friends from up north. So um, an Alaska coalition of parents forms in support of Measure 2. So for those of you who don't know what ballot measure two is uh, in Alaska, that's uh, they're going for legalization and, and on their ballot, it's ballot measure two. So the Alaska Dispatch News reports that a group of more than two dozen concerned parents from across Alaska have formed a coalition in support of ballot measure two, the statewide initiative on the November ballot to regulate marijuana like alcohol. They believe that regulating marijuana like alcohol will be a more effective means of keeping it out of the hands of their children. Hmm. Noting that marijuana prohibition has failed to prevent teens from accessing a marijuana and illegal dealers are not limiting their sales to adults over 21. So, Wow. Yeah. So what? that, that kind of ties into the story here. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It's you regulate it, you educate your children about it, and that's how you stop your kids from doing things that aren't right. You don't stop them by by trying to lead them with fear or trying to stop all those businesses from coming around. You, you educate them. This is true. Education is the key. So Hawaii's medical marijuana program faces a moment of truth. Um, the state government's stance on medical marijuana slowly drifted toward more pragmatic policy. Signed into law during the summer of 2013 and going into effect January 2nd of 2015, Hawaii's medical marijuana patients may now possess up to four ounces of consumable marijuana, up from the initial one ounce limit. One vague aspect of the pre-existing law regarding the number of mature plants versus immature cannabis plants has been simplified to a seven plant limit, regardless of plants maturity. We we kind of had that uh, that. Um, split in in our marijuana also where it was like four four you could have like, four in veg and three in bloom yeah, and uh clones horrible. weren't supposed to be considered a plant but when the police would come in and they saw clones because you take like seven or eight cuttings and only a few of them survive uh they would count those as plants also so that was a big confusion out here for a while well roughly one percent of hawaii's population more than thirteen thousand medical marijuana patients are having difficulty getting their medicine thanks to these regulations. To obtain the state license certif certificate, Hawaiians must be suffering from a, quote, debilitating medical condition, end quote, such as malignant cancers, multiple sclerosis, HIV AIDS, and have their conditions confirmed by a physician. Yet once these patients receive state clearance to use medical marijuana, they're required to either grow their own cannabis or risk 
the black market. So almost exactly the same th- same thing that's kind of happening here that we were talking about. A lot of people are uh, unable to grow their own medicine or they don't know where to, um, you know, obtain some rootings or some clones or, you know, seeds. Um, and so they uh, they turn to the black market as a way to get the medicine. Well, what's wrong with the black market is if there is if there is just one type of medication, you pretty much get whatever, you know, whatever your your guy has or your girl has, whatever. Um, so, so in well, doing this, it that will, and it's not tested. There could be mold, yes. mildew, pesticides, all sorts of stuff on it. Well, what's interesting is in 2000, Hawaii became the first and only state to discriminalize medical marijuana by legislation as opposed to doing it through the ballot. Despite its relatively early mover status, the law leaves Hawaii Hawaiians patients with nearly non-existent access to medication. Yeah, and they are also they get busted from taking it from island to island. They uh, a guy was pulled off a TSA line and he had like a gram or two on him. And he, even though he's a medical patient in Hawaii, now he's going from island to island with his medicine. He got busted for um, transporting a dangerous, uh, dangerous uh, substance. That's ridiculous. But I guess the way that they're looking at it is if you fly from uh, California to Vegas or something like that. I mean, well, you're not crossing state lines going island to island. This is a true point, you know. But the feds run TSA, and well, you know, hey. <laughs> well, you well, know that's interesting maybe it's because you have to go over international water. Well, because of you know how many how many terrorists exactly has TSA a nab? Um. That's right. Um. <laughs> um. So you know TSA is keeping us so safe from terrorism. Yeah. So are our borders. We got all these ISIS and illegals just running in. But oh, and and Ebola. Oh, yeah. Yes, the first case of Ebola reported in uh, Texas today. So please make sure you take care of yourselves. And Christine, if you're if you're listening, we wish you the best and your father the best. So she's Christine Kramer, who was on our show last two weeks, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. She's out there visiting her father in a, in a hospital out there in Texas. And uh, that's actually the hospital that the Ebola broke out at. So take care of yourself and we wish you a safe return. Eric Holder is stepping down as United States Attorney General. Get out. Oh, it's about Woo-hoo. time. <laughs> Just he was as so he, good. <laughs> good at lying to Congress. Look, you're going to get me in so much trouble with my Democratic friends. I, I can't hang with you anymore. But <laughs> just as Holder prepares to step down from his post, he appears more open than ever to the argument. Not to actually doing it, but just open to the argument for rescheduling marijuana as a less dangerous, more beneficial drug. This is what Holder said in his interview with Katie Couric this past two, Thursday. I think it's certainly a question we need to ask ourselves whether or not marijuana is as serious of a drug as heroin. Are you kidding me? Well, it's because they're both on uh, controlled one substances, we class need, one controlled substance. We need to ask ourselves whether or not marijuana is as serious of a drug as heroin. Uh, I was going to say, I don't have to ask myself. Uh, neither do I. But the Schedule One classification hinders federal funding for further research into the benefits of cannabis. Columnist Jacob Solom, I think that's his name, recently wrote in Forbes that moving marijuana to Schedule 3 or below could make it easier for university researchers to look into the drug's full potential. While marijuana would still be illegal under federal law, recategorizing it would also remove some of the financial burdens that states licensed marijuana businesses currently face. I just want to say thanks. For someone like Chris June Kiliani, who has the foresight to move forward and try to get it reclassified as a Schedule 2, we don't need some ignorant nincompoop to say, we need to find out if it's as dangerous as heroin. I don't know. Let me shoot you up with wealth. Oh, wait. You don't shoot up pot. Oh. Hey, uh, no injecting that pot. 
<laughs> and you got and these are the people running our country. No wonder we're in the poop hole that we're in. I was gonna say when I was up at legislate uh, up at in Carson City during the legislative session, um, they were talking about how. Uh, you know we're fiftieth in the state for education, and I was like, "And you know where all the?" And I said, "Do you know where all the uneducated uh, un Nevadans go?" And they said, "Where?" I said, "Into government." <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah, into government and politics. I think, and and they and I I had so many people's head whip around. I could I could hear the you know the whiplash going on. They were like, "Who said that?" Well, we're going to take our uh, final break of the hour, and we'll be back with uh, some national news. Right on. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Greenspot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome back to Nevada the Cannabis News Hour. Welcome back to Nevada Cannabis News Hour, and uh, we have some breaking news, I guess, out of Maine. There, are people dressed up as police walked into somebody's grow and stole all their plants. What? That's what I'm saying. And the state police are seeking the public's help in identifying three men who were involved in the armed robbery, uh, robbery of medical marijuana plants in the town of Winterport. The incident took place on Sunday, September 21st, so a couple of days ago. The police uh, are not identifying the location. The troopers said that the trio entered the property wearing um, clothes and impersonating law enforcement personnel. The clothes, which is easily obtainable online, um, says SWAT, and they have SWAT-style vests. Um, so the police are now seeking fake police for robbing real weed. <laughs> Well, hopefully these uh, places in Maine had the security protocols that they're requesting everybody in Nevada to have. Well, yeah, their surveillance cameras on the property show the photos of two of the robbers. And if anybody has any or any information that leading to their arrest, there is a reward. And I don't think it's pot. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we have a little news out of uh, USA, some uh, legalization votes in 2014 that are going to matter. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of these uh, votes going on here in, in the United States over this next year or two. Uh, we have Washington, D.C. is going for soft legalization. Uh, Florida is voting for medical marijuana. Uh, see, we have uh, Alaska yeah, legalization. We have, Alaska. Uh, we have MPP collecting signatures in for multiple states in Nevada, Massachusetts, ramping up in Arizona, Oregon, Oregon. Oregon. We already said Alaska. So, so everybody's jumping on board with the legalization. I ju I think legalization in Nevada may be just a bit premature. Um, I I'd like to see how they um, the dispensaries work because they're chronically been shortages in anywhere that they have medical marijuana um, first and then they have complete legalization like Colorado there were shortages for patients 
Yeah, and as you as you uh, saw uh, last week when they had the meeting at the Grant Sawyer building, they wanted to limit the grows, and you know people were like, "Hey, wait a minute! Look what happened in Washington and Colorado. You know we we want to make sure that people have safe access. Plus, the amount of cannabis that it takes, you know, to make some of the concentrates, the lotions, the RSO, the coconut pills. I mean, there, there, there's more than you need." And I'd like to note on this, there's a lot of people that are like, especially in this state with the ballot initiative that's going around that are, are saying, no, I'm not going to sign that because it's it's not 100% perfect. This is an initiative. You got to understand, this is an initiative. This isn't the law is going to be passed that you're signing. This is the rough draft. So if you believe in legalization, you should sign this and then lobby and and write write your people for the changes you want in it not just say i'm not going to sign it because it's not perfect well it's a nothing is perfect it, yeah you know it's this is all initiative. work if you can show me one single law that is perfect that started began and ended perfect nowhere in the history of these united states have we ever had anything well you know and and that's how people are they were they uh, and i've heard it here with the, with this law well i'm not going to i'm not going to back this i'm not going to do this because it's not it's, it's stupid n- here it's not written this here you know what these are the same people who don't do anything productive or proactive and and get on board with it first they just gripe afterwards the mm-hmm. other thing is is that if if the law isn't perfect you can go in and tweak it much like you know people were complaining that chris g didn't automatically move to reschedule it to uh three instead of two yeah. at that meeting it's the way politics work you're never going to get everything you want but you want to be able to move forward and not take steps back so you got to get on board with what you want and then make the changes well speaking of taking steps back maryland maryland maryland's medical marijuana commission proposes a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in grower fees a year a sum so exorbitant some officials believe it may affect small and newly developing medical marijuana businesses wow i thought henderson was crazy One hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a year for licensing for grower fees just to grow a year wow according to the baltimore sun maryland medical marijuana commission has proposed for such a fee to be imposed on each of the 15 potential growers envisaged for the state's new program the commission has also proposed a yearly forty thousand dollar charge for dispensary these steep license fees on top of the estimated six thousand in application fees would finance the state's medical marijuana program well it sounds like they're they're trying to quash it before it even gets up and running you know they're kind of cutting the legs out from underneath people well they're going to pass this on to the patients no doubt oh yeah I mean, you're going to go in and, you know, I, I don't know what they charge on the East Coast for, for a zip, a gram, or anything like that. But, I mean, you go in for a gram, you know, pay 20 bucks a gram, they're going to be paying like $60, $80. Yeah, that's the truth. And, and you're right. It, it, the, the cost will just be passed on to the patient. Also, I don't think any of these businesses are going to be able to get up and running unless, they're in the, unless the people are rich to begin with. Unless they have the money to begin with, because it's a gamble. Much like Las Vegas and there, and all our fees and fines, people had to pay just to get in the door. And Maryland is a suburb of Washington D.C. <laughs> so uh, perhaps that's why. I remember, you had that representative that was going to attach appropriations after D.C. voted to decriminalize. Maybe he's somewhere in on it. That's why. Maybe, maybe, and in another news ab- about uh, about uh, campaigns and campaign officials yeah, and people a, that are running name, for office. Here's a name. Have you heard of Ann Armstrong? I'm about to. I think. No. <laughs> she, Any relation to Neil? No, she's uh, she's running for governor of Rhode Island as a write-in hopeful. Okay, and she's uh, she is blazing something a little different in her campaign. She says uh, she says we've been lied to a long time by our government. 
asserts Armstrong in her YouTube video. And something that's been essential to our health has been taken away from us. Wait a minute. Is she the one that smokes a joint in her? Exactly. She smokes in the video. Uh, She is a medical marijuana caregiver and is running as a member of the Rhode Island Compassion Party. Says she uses cannabis every day. Yes, I do smoke cannabis, and yes, I do inhale, she says. It helps me. It helps me to focus. It helps me to facilitate communication. Before her work as a caregiver, Armstrong was an uh, electrical engineer for Rayathon. So, that wow. is fantastic to finally ha- have a candidate with the testicular fortitude to, you know, stand up. And speaking, and speaking of, she doesn't even have testicles. <laughs> I, I I try to air away from that word as much as possible. But speaking of candidates, Democrat U.S. Senate candidate Allison Lundgren Grimes says it's time to discuss making marijuana legal in Kentucky. She's running against Senate Minority Leader Darth Vader. I'm I'm sorry, Mitch McConnell. <laughs> You know, um, who is re- who is receiving all this national media attention? Remember, uh, it was Kentucky that had their um, hemp's was it a uh, yeah hemp yeah, initiative? Those, their hemp seeds that were held up because they were shipped over from Italy. Yeah, I think that might have had a little bit to do with who ordered those hemp seeds too. Well, yeah. Allison said that it's worthwhile for elected officials to discuss the prospect of making marijuana illegal. She said, I would want to have the discussion, and I think it's worthwhile to bring the experts together and talk about the reclassification, especially for medical purposes. In addition, Grimes criticized, McC- criticized McConnell for not recognizing the economic benefits Colorado is experiencing after making marijuana illegal for adults and regulating it like alcohol. According to a bluegrass poll, bluegrass, I'll go on, (laughs) registered Kentucky voters, 52% favored allowing the use of medical marijuana, just 37% were opposed. Hmm. Well, we also, um, also on the East Coast in Pennsylvania, just, uh, just this week, and Harrisburg, a bill allowing the use of medical marijuana passed the Pennsylvania Senate by a vote of 43 to 7 on Monday afternoon. 43 to 7. Who were the seven dumb donkeys? I want to know. <laughs> so the seven that took lobby money, probably? Or the seven dwarfs. They obviously <laughs> must not want to get reelected. So anyway, this bill uh, was amended, reducing the number of commissions conditions for which medical marijuana could be prescribed such as age hiv diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis a dozen conditions are covered it helps more than just the epilepsy with children uh it helps adults who have epilepsy to help serve uh, here to help soldiers with ptsd cancers multiple sclerosis severe fibromyalgia so now the bill is moving on to the house so congratulations pennsylvania Absolutely, absolutely. Um, from the testing and science uh, portion, out of Israel, there is a there's a company called Sick Medical, or pronounced Psych Medical. Uh, they have a medical marijuana inhaler. Uh, it's a 3D printed cannabis inhaler. May help monitor dosages for people that. Uh, use medical marijuana as as a medicine it all will deliver the dosage um, and it will give you feedback uh, the 3d printer employs preloaded preloaded cartridges includes including a dose meter and has wi-fi enabled so that it may be able to connect to mobile devices to further monitor and track usage so this small novel device allows physicians to administer cannabis in a truly truly pharmaceutical manner the revolutionary uh, the revolutionary technology in the sick inhaler or psych inhaler allows us for the first time to administer cannabis in a precise and predictable fashion i don't i don't know about that only because you know all these credit card companies have been hacked and whatnot next thing you know somebody's gonna hack you and either underdose or overdose or 
I, I don't know. I, I need a little more info on that one. Yeah, I think I think a little bit more info is needed. So if you'd like more information about our about our events, about anything else, you can go on weekend702.org and find out about our our events. We have first Friday this coming up this Friday. Hempfest on, Hemp on Saturday. on Saturday. Patience first. first. The following Saturday. The following Saturday, we have the Halloween party. And then we have the Halloween Day Parade. And if you'd like to march with us on the Halloween Day Parade, please sign up on meetup.com. And all that information is at wecan702.org. And like us on Facebook. Yep. Check us out. Check Hopefully us out on Twitter. Events. Hopefully see you on Friday. All right. Be safe, everybody.